stay here. Thank you, Jesus, for another day of life. Thank you so much for all the blessings you give us daily that we overlook, we take for granted, running water, food at our table, a roof over our heads, being able to have clothes to wear. Thank you, Lord, so much for all your blessings. We are very thankful. And we'd like to ask you to open up our minds, open up our hearts today to your word, to what you need to say to us, to what you're going to share with us. Continue guiding us through our life and helping us discern right from wrong as we walk today, Lord. Walk with us. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Good morning, Wesley. Good morning. I hope you are well. Hope you are well. Today's reading is a very good one, guys. It's a very interesting one. It talks about the apostles. It talks about the disciples that were chosen as Jesus' apostles. There were a lot of disciples. And on this particular night, Jesus went to the mountain to pray so that Jesus could decide, could discern, and ask God's help on deciding which of them to choose, right? He needed to get guidance from his Heavenly Father, so he, retri- he retired up a high mountain or far away to get away from distractions. And I just imagine when I read this, when I pre-read this before coming on, I'm thinking to myself, wow, Jesus. Good morning, Derek. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Um, I'm thinking if Jesus had to go and pray, and he did that often. I have something in my glasses and it just won't go away. Um, Jesus went out to pray often and he he put himself away from the crowds a lot of times and he would go yonder to pray he needed quiet he needed no distractions when he went and out there to pray and he was Jesus and he prayed a lot so how much more do we need to pray I'm thinking (laughs) if Jesus prayed so much We should be praying all day long, all the time, because we're so flawed compared to Jesus. And I'm just thinking, wow, I need to be praying more. (laughs) But Jesus went and he, he asked for God's assistance, his heavenly father's assistance, so often. And this was one of the times that he asked for his heavenly father's assistance when he needed to decide on what 12 to pick he had like hundreds of disciples but he needed to pick 12 to be his apostles right amen now there's a lot of form of prayer there's three kinds of prayer actually um one is called communion communal <clears throat> sorry communal prayer <clears throat> Communal prayer is when you're just talking to God. You're fellowshipping with him. Like you're just at night. I tend to do this at night for my nighttime prayers. When I'm, when I'm laying in bed, I'm just like thinking, thank you, Lord, so much for giving me the strength to do what I did today. I had a giant to-do list. I didn't finish it all, but I got enough of it done. Um, please, Lord, help me finish this and this tomorrow. And you're just like fellowshipping with them, right? You're just like saying, oh, when this, that happened, I might have not taken care of this situation very well, Lord. I'm sorry about that. I, I could have done it differently. And you're, you're talking to him like a friend, right? So that's communal prayer. That's, um, you're not asking for anything. You're just, you're just loving him and fellowshipping with him. Then you have the petition kind of prayer. The petition prayer is when you ask God for your own personal needs. When you're asking him for something you would like, and if it's his will, please, Lord, I would 
like to have this problem fixed or I would like to be able to have this or that in my life. That's petition prayer. And we tend to do that after we talk a little bit with them. I know I do. I talk a little bit with them first and then I throw in a petition or two or three. Um, And then you have the intercession kind of prayer, which is when we ask God for the needs of others. When you're asking God for the needs of a friend or the needs of a of some situation in the world that's going on right now, like I have prayed often for the situation with the elections, that there is peace and that God puts in office who he wants there, right? Who he wants there. We have our jobs to do, which is to vote. I already did that. I'm done. (laughs) I'm done. We need to get make sure we vote. There's so many different ways to make that easy for us. So we need to make sure we do it because that's our way of con- contributing to get the person that God wants in office, in office, whoever it may be. But in order to do that, we need to also vote. We can't just sit around and not do it. We need to vote. We need to read about it. We need to um, read about everything really well. And, of course, I got the guidance of my smart sisters, Henrietta and Jessica. They helped me because a lot of those words on those amendments are just so big that I just don't understand them. So I made sure that, you know, and it's easy. You just, if you don't have anybody to talk to that knows, like like I'm very fortunate, I have smart sisters to help me. But if you don't, then you can just Google the name and it'll pop up a little bit about the person. And I try to vote pro-life. I vote pro-life because if somebody is going to protect an innocent child in a womb that has no say and that has and that's unprotected, um, if somebody's going to protect life, then I know that they're good people. <laughs> I know that it'll be okay to put him in office. Yes, please. So that's that's how I do it. Good morning, Peggy. Good morning. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning, my beautiful sisters. Hope you have a beautiful Wednesday. So yes, let's get to the reading because those are the three different kinds of prayers. The communal prayer, which we do a lot of during the day, which is when we just talk to God, just like a friend. Then we have the petition prayer when we ask for our needs. And then we have the intercession prayer, which is when we ask for somebody else or some other situation. There's a lot of forms of prayer. And this day, I believe that our Lord was using all of them because he spent all night praying. I could just imagine he was just doing all of it, asking God to guide him to choose the correct 12 that he wanted to be his apostles. So let's get to the reading. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Simon whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Jonah, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Amen. So this is the this is the reading where he chose the 12. Among the 12 he needed to have the traitor. He needed to have Judas because if not what God sent him to earth to do couldn't have been done, right? His prophecy couldn't have happened if he didn't have Judas in there. 
everything that God does, everything that God does in this life is for a reason. He counts every hair in our head, and I have a lot of hair. <laughs> he knows every hair in our heads. He knows everything we're going to think about. He knows everything we're going to do the next minute we're going to do it. He knows our life. He knows everything about us. Everything is already planned. Everything has already been written in our lives. We already have a book on his mighty, mighty library with our name on it. Jeanette Swanson. Jeanette Perusi Swanson and her life. When she was born, everything that happened in her life, and then when she died. We're all going to die. So he, he already knows all this. But... Um, he needed a traitor. He needed someone to fulfill the prophecy of what he was supposed to do here on earth. Down here it says, The gospel writers note that before every important event in Jesus' life, he would take time to go off by himself and pray. This time Jesus was preparing to choose his inner circle, the twelve disciples, Make sure that all your important decisions are grounded in prayer. Amen. Amen. Before we make any important decision, we need to take a minute or two and think, okay, what would Christ do in this situation? A lot of times we don't take the time to think about that. It just takes a couple of minutes. You can always tell somebody, Give me just a couple of minutes. i got to think about it. And instead of thinking about it yourself, you could be praying about it. You can be asking, asking our Lord, Lord, do you really want me to do this? You know, speak to me. And he will. In your innermost being, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you will guide you. You know. You know what you should be doing or not doing. Sometimes we don't want to ask. We don't want to pray about it because we know that if we do, we're not going to be doing it and we really want to do it, right? So we need to, we need to be 100% in, not just a little bit in. We can't be lukewarm Christians. We got to be hot, boiling hot Christians. And to do that, we need to take it all on, do everything we do for the glory of God. We can't just do things we want to do for his glory. And then the other things, well, that's for our glory. No, we can't do that. We need to change. And it's hard to do. I'm guilty. I'm guilty also of not praying when I should be praying before I do something. Jesus had many disciples. Disciples means learners. But he chose only 12 apostles. The apostles are the messengers. And the disciples are the learners. He had a lot of disciples. And he had 12 apostles, which were the messengers, which he sent out to the world to spread God's word. The apostles were his inner circle to whom he gave special training and whom he sent out with his own authority. These were the men who started the Christian church. In the gospel, these 12 men are usually called the disciples. But in the book of Acts, they are called apostles. Amen. Yes, there are 12 of them. And actually, I will tell you a little bit about all 12 of them in just a minute. <laughs> Jesus selected ordinary men with a mixture of backgrounds and personalities to be his disciples. Today, God calls ordinary people together to build his church, teach salvation's message, and serve others out of love. Alone, we may feel unqualified to serve Christ effectively. But together, we make up a group strong enough to serve God in any way. Ask for patience to accept the diversity of people in your church and build on the variety of strength represented in the group. Amen. Amen. And that's hard to do sometimes, guys, because in order to be able to live... Um, 
joyfully <laughs> with other people is really hard because you need to adjust your way of thinking. You need to be more acceptable more accepting of different personalities and you need to look at the people in front of you as God would see them for their good things but they're going to have flaws also as we have flaws we may not see our flaws but I'm sure everybody else does because <laughs> I've been called a lot of names in the past and some of them are true I look into my myself and I'm like yeah I am a little bit like that. I got to change. Over 50% is true. Over 50%? What do you mean? You got to hold yourself accountable. Yeah. You preach to others, but you really have to hold yourself accountable. Yes, we all do. That's what I'm saying. We, that's what, yeah. That's you. what I'm saying. Yeah, me and specifically, but You're you too, rough. girl. I'm working on <laughs> that's it. That's my so. daughter. You're rough every day. This quarantine's got mom feeling some type of way. <laughs> Well, I'm here all day in this house, but anyway, it does help me. It helps me a lot to read God's word and to and to adjust where I need to adjust. But we were talking about what were we talking about? Oh, about how we have all different personalities. My my closest sisters, like Henrietta and Jessica and and Lisa, and we all have very very um, strong personalities. So sometimes we clash, but we need to make up after we clash. The clashing is the world around us. God is what holds us together as unity. God is the main reason we're doing what we're doing, right? You know, we're praying together. We're doing um, commentaries after our rosary and praying and stuff and sometimes we might get a little hot-headed but you know what we make up afterwards because that's what happened also to the disciples and the apostles sometimes they didn't get along and they would have to go their separate ways for a while but eventually they came back together look at paul and peter trying to like each other peter was not very happy what happened that paul was sent to the group um, the person that was persecuting everybody is all of a sudden supposed to be his brother. <laughs> He's like, what? No, but he adjusted just how we need to adjust too. Good morning, Rose. Good morning, Aniko. Good morning, my beautiful sisters. Um, so yes, we need to be accepting of one another and we need to work together. And I noticed that a lot of times I'm shy about going places or doing things alone and I need my sisters in Christ to come with me because together you're stronger and Jesus knows that that's why he sent them two by two in Acts you see him going two by two to all these places and he selected ordinary men and women which is us he he went and looked for fishermen he went and looked for all kinds of people in every in every area of life for the tax collector Matthew and the uh, the others were saying what are you doing Jesus do you do you not know who he is he's like yes exactly i'm here to help the sinners i'm here to help the sinners not just you know so he's there to help the sinners to turn lives around and upside down. That's what Jesus does. He's the savior. He saves. He heals. He heals your body and he heals you emotionally. He heals your heart and he heals your body. The disciples are not always listed by the same names. For example, Peter is sometimes called Simon or Cephas. I hope I'm pronouncing these words right, guys. I'm sorry if I'm not. Matthew is also known as Levi. Bartholomew is thought to be the same person as Nathaniel, John 1, 45. Judas, the son of James, is also called Thaddeus. So yes, there are different names for the disciples. And also, there's a lot of James. So I'm always confused with James. I know there's like three or four different James. And I'm always like, what James is this? I try to put the right James in the right place. 
Um, also, there's a couple of Judas. There's the traitor that we all know of. And we get confused sometimes and think that we're talking about Judas, the one that betrayed him, but it, we really are not. We're talking about there's Judas, son of James, and then there's Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. So there's two different kinds of Judases. And I believe there's another there's another one later on that comes later on in the um, New Testament as well. So, yeah. So before we read our little devotional, I would like to maybe read a little bit about what happened to the disciples or to the apostles. Aren't you guys curious? A lot of them aren't really mentioned much. Um, in Acts, you really hear about three of them. You don't hear too much about the others, but, um, okay, so I'm going to open up my iPad here. Reports and legends about abound, and they are not always reliable, but it is safe to say that the apostles went far and wide as heralds of the message of the risen Christ. An early legend says they cast lots and divided up the world to determine who would go where, so all could hear about Jesus. They suffered greatly for their faith, and in most cases, meant violent deaths on account of their bold witness. Peter and Paul both martyred in Rome about 66 AD during the persecution under Emperor Nero. Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down at his request, since he did not feel he was worthy to die in the same manner as his Lord. Andrew went to the land of the man-eaters in what is now the Soviet Union. Christians were claim him as the first to bring the gospel to their land. He also preached in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, and in Greece, where he is said to have been crucified. Thomas was probably most active in the area east of Syria, Tradition has him preaching as far east as India, where the ancient Marathoma Christians revere him as their founder. They claim that he died there when pierced through with the spears of four soldiers. Philip possibly had a powerful ministry in North America and then in Asia Minor, where he converted the wife of a Roman proconsul in retaliation the proconsul had philip arrested and cruelly put to death matthew the tax collector and writer of a gospel ministered in persia and ethiopia some of the oldest reports says he was not martyred while others say he was stabbed to death in ethiopia bartholomew had widespread missionary travels attributed to him by tradition to India with Thomas back to Armenia and also to Ethiopia and South Arabia. There are various accounts of how he met his death as a martyr for the gospel. James, the son of Alphaeus, is one of at least three James referred to in the New Testament. Which is, some, which is some confusion as to which is which. But this James is reckoned to have ministered in Syria. The Jewish historian Joseph reported that he, has been, he was stoned to death and then clubbed to death. Stoned and clubbed to death. Wow, that's, that's bad. Simon the Zealot. So the story goes, ministered in Persia and was killed after refusing to sacrifice to the sun god. Matthias, the apostle chosen to replace Judas, tradition sends him to Syria and Andrew <clears throat> with Andrew. So he was sent to Syria with Andrew and to death by burning. John. 
the only one of the apostles generally thought to have died a natural death from old age. He was the leader of the church in the Ephesus area and is said to have taken care of Mary, the mother of Jesus, in his home during Dominion's persecution in the middle 90s. He was exiled to the island of Patmos. There he is credited with writing the last book of the New Testament, the Revelation. An early Latin tradition has him escaping unhurt after being cast into boiling oil at Rome. Influence of the Apostles Today. Oops. Influence of the Apostles Today. The name of Jesus' apostles have become the most common names for male in the Western world. How many do you know named John, Pete, Tom, Andy, Jim, Bart, or Phil? A lot, right? <laughs> At least four of the apostles were fishermen. And this can be part of the reason that the earliest and most prominent Christian symbol was a fish. After the death of the apostles, we do not find great missionary figures of the statue of the stature of Paul. Yet the faith continued to spread like wildfire, even though Christianity was declared an illegal religion. Amen. And the Bible is still there. It's never been it's, be, it's never been destroyed. It is strong, stronger than ever stronger than ever. We are here awaiting the return of our Lord with, um, with joy and learning a little bit more every day through the Bible. The Bible is our guidance. Our, the Bible is everything. It, 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 it tells us how to live. It answers every question we may have in our lives. It, it's so powerful. and We are so blessed to have the Bible. In those days of the apostles, they didn't have the Bible. Yes, they had Jesus, but not everybody was able to really speak to Jesus on a personal basis or know everything that happened in all the places and how he lived and how he was born and, and, and how everybody that followed him lived and the egg examples of the people he healed and how lives were changed all that and so much more is in the bible and we have that in our grasp to read and to meditate on and to follow these examples in our own life to be more like christ to others and to be worthy of eternal life right amen amen so we are very blessed thank you jesus so much for your word for opening up our eyes and for strengthening us to be stronger Christians. We are today's disciples. Today's disciples. That's us. And that's the name I chose for my um, Bible study group. We're studying Acts. And we chose a name, Today's Disciples, for ourselves because that's what we all are. We are all, we are all today's disciples. We are, we are sent to spread God's good news to the world and also to our lives, to our own lives and to the lives around us. Like my daughter says, yeah, I need a lot of help. <laughs> so that's why I do a lot of praying. <laughs> May the Lord bless you all and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you all kindly and give you love and strength and joy and peace and a sermon out there and protection amen i love you all i'll see you soon for more prayer bye bye